Good morning, everybody. Um, this morning, I got a, a really um, interesting comment on uh, yesterday's video from Lauren Svensson Ems. Um, the Svensson bit suggests uh, Scandinavian, possibly Swedish uh, connections. But, uh, but anyway, um, I'll just mention that because I'm a, a Berwick Bandits fan and we used to have a Swedish rider called Jimmy Nielsen. And although he, only, although he only rode for one year for Berwick, he is in the Hall of Fame. He was that good a rider, Jimmy Nielsen of Sweden. Anyway, that's just my hope that maybe I've got that bit right. Um, probably it's just a little bit like myself. Um, obviously an Italian surname that uh, that has survived for genera generations. Um, anyway, let's get on to what... Um, Lauren had to say. Um, basically, she was asking me about um, Kathleen Zellner and her use of media. And very interestingly, she pointed out that she's um, uh, sort of a, oh, what was the term that she used? A patron of uh, the Perplexed Cutie channel. Um, and personally, I've got a lot of time for for uh, Perplex QT. I really enjoyed the chat that we had last week. Hopefully we'll do another one soon. Um, it's always interesting to get uh, so many different perspectives on this, on this case. So as I say, um, Lauren asked me about um, my thoughts on Kathleen Zellner and her use of the media, um, which immediately made me think I should do a video about this. And then I suddenly realised that you know, I cannot really do the, the subject justice in a short video. It'll, it'll need a bit more um, discussion. And I'm sure there will be a lot more discussion in the future about uh, the use of, uh, of media, because it is, it is very interesting, isn't it? Um, my first reaction would be, yes, Kathleen Zellner certainly uses the media, Whereas Ken Kratz totally abused uh, the media and was quite happy to tell all sorts of lies to the media. Um, and has still basically got the Wisconsin press and journalists and TV reporters in their, in their pocket, in his pocket. You, would, you, you only have to see that press conference that he did um, following the, 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 the first lot of oral arguments at the Seventh Circuit, and Steve Drizzen and Lauren Nyride and everybody else was absolutely aghast that Ken Kratz is there doing a doing a press conference in the building in the federal building just after the oral arguments, just for the uh, Wisconsin press. Um, also, tomorrow, um, just like to mention, as you as you may know, I'm doing a, a live chat with the, the Aussie, Mark Hoddinett, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. East Coast time. Um, and I will be discussing, obviously, <laughs> the whole, whole idea of uh, chatting with Mark is to get a, an, uh, the Aussie perspective um, on, on various things about the case. Um, and one of the things I'll certainly mention is that I had a, a really interesting uh, comment also from um, somebody who just goes under the name of Ali, that's A-L-I rather than our good friend Ali Apperson, but Ali, um, pointing out that certainly in Australia, when it comes to that sort of case, if, if, if a case similar to, to the Holbrook homicide was being investigated in Australia, there would be a media blackout. There would be very, very strict um, observance of this this blackout and that, that's basically the same here in the UK now uh, certain details would not be allowed to uh, to be leaked um, <laughs> talking about Aussies um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to quote something from the Bible so please Karen Ganey I'm not here to try and promote beliefs in uh, in Christianity or anything like that it's just that for me, this is a great quote. It's from the book of Matthew. 
Um, it's one of my favorite New Testament quotes. And it goes like this. It's Matthew, um, Matthew 11, chapter 11, verse 16 to, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to go to about 18, 16 to 18, okay? And this is, this is Jesus saying, saying this. He says, To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came, eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard. Um, <laughs> now immediately Eric Cozy is thinking, hmm, that Jesus fellow sounds a bit like Paul the Scotsman, but no, that that isn't that isn't the point of the um, of of what what's being presented there. The idea is that obviously, as you you can hear by by what's being said, it's a case of it, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Um, and I think that when it comes to her attitude, her her, her using of the media, basically Kathleen Zellner has been forced to do it this way because of the, the way that the state and Kenneth Kratz have used the media. Um, much, much as, obviously, as, as supporters, we love to get as much news as we possibly can. I'm sure I speak for everybody on that behalf. We, we, we love to find out the, na the latest information. Um, is there a chance that some people will take exception to her use of the media? We, we hear that some attorneys have, have sort of said, mm, I'm not too sure about this uh, tweeting all the time. Um, so I suppose my sort of, um, my, my comment would be, I'm, I'm assuming very, very similar to what Eric Cozy would say. And this, this is what the dude would say. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, but if I'm wrong, then don't worry, he'll be sure to correct me. But the dude will say, with, well, look, when it comes to trying to get Stephen Avery out of prison, she's only got one chance at this. And therefore, she has to play all the cards that she can do. Any card that she leaves unplayed is to her is a huge mistake. So anything that she can do to try and help the cause, she must do. Um, as I say, damned if she does, damned if she doesn't. There are some people that might say, well, her use of the Twitter might be damaging her case. Um, I, I would have to kind of listen to, 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 those, to those arguments to, to see what... Um, what sort of merit I would find in that. Um, I know that one of the things that um, irritated some people was the tweet um, to do with this book. In which, um, in the tweet, somebody said, um, could I get a kind, a signed copy of the book and Kathleen Zellner, you know, a signed copy of your book. And Kathleen Zellner wrote back, well, you know, if you send send the book to, to my office and I'll gladly sign it for you. And the obviously the implication there is that as far as Kathleen Zellner is concerned, the implication is that this is her book. Whereas, of course, <laughs> it was actually John Farrakh that wrote it. Um, I do fortunately have a little bit of inf inside information about about that book. Um, a lot of people were very surprised when a month before it was officially announced that the book was coming out, I'd actually, in a, in a live chat with uh, Eric Cozy, we discussed the fact that John Farrakh was doing this book. I mentioned that uh, John Farrakh had and I had been exchanging messages via Facebook Messenger um, Basically, I'd said to him, you know, um, I hope you're getting on really well in um, Juliet or J Juliet, whatever it is. It, and he's, he's uh, near 
he's back in Illinois anyway, near Chicago, Juliet, I think it's called. Um, and I said, I hope you're getting on really well, but can I just say how much we miss the John Farrakh articles that we used to get about making a murderer? And he said, uh, well, <laughs> I've got some news for you. I've been going to see Kathleen Zellner roughly once a week to do interviews with her about a book that's coming out. Um, so I, hmm, I think in fairness, the fact that, okay, it says John Farrakh, but I think just about everything in the book to do with the Wrecking Crew, the Wrecking Crew does refer to Kathleen Zellner and her um, helpers. But yes, I, I understand the fact that it's, that it's presenting it as if um, it's her book. It's certainly a book about her and her wrecking crew. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I must admit, I, I would agree that if, if, if I wanted somebody to sign this book, first and foremost, I, I think it probably would be John Farrakh. I would, I, I would love to meet John Farrakh sometime, sometime. I'd also obviously love to meet Kathleen Zellner uh, sometime, um, although she is quite scary, um, but, uh, and I don't think she would, uh, suffer my havering, uh, gladly, um, but it would be nice to, to meet her sometime, uh, but yes, for me, um, I, I admire John Farrakh for, um, putting out the book and doing, doing this, this, uh, interviewing of, of Kathleen Zellner to produce this, this book, which, Obviously, it it's the most recent book, so it deals with the, the, the you know the, the case recently and up to date. Um, just to finish, I just before I was about to do this video, another tweet from Kathleen Zellner, in which she said, "Is it too much to ask that we have the same unbiased type of judge um, at state level at at um, the, the next stage?" as we had at the appellate stage. Um, this is supposed to be the best legal system in the world. Um, I think we're finding out that it's certainly not the best legal system in the world. Um, it's a system whereby, as I think Dean Strang said, to, to, to be accused is to lose. As soon as you've got police accusing you of something, they basically give the option of two options. A bit like O'Kelly's um, questionnaire for Brendan. I'm either sorry for what I did or I'm not sorry for what I did. But you're going to get done for, for, the, for, 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 for it, whether you did it or not. Um, and that's certainly the case if you're going to either get, um, if, if you plead guilty, you might get, you know, 20, 30 years but if you plead not guilty, you're just going to get life sentence without the possibility of parole. Even Brendan Dassey, of course, it, he's he's doing <coughs> he's doing actually life in prison. The possibility of parole kicks in at twenty forty eight. But again, only if he admits to being guilty. Um, you know, you 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 you. It's. There's so many things wrong with the, um, the the legal system over there. That's just just one small example that that I know bugs um, a lot of people outside of America and probably a whole load of people within America as well. Um, anyway, um, as I say, Lon, thanks so much for your question. Um, it's something that I, I think would be interesting, certainly, to discuss. Um, in, in a lot more detail, in a lot more depth. Um, yeah, if, 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 if we start a little bit of a discussion about it, um, I would just say that I, um, I, I'm i very much a, a fan of um, Kathleen Zellner and what she's doing. Um, as, as I say, I, I think given the cards that she's been dealt at the start, she has no option but to, to, to play every card that she can and to do whatever she can um, to, to, try, to try and uh, bring some sort of justice to Teresa, to Stephen and to hopefully to Brendan. 
Anyway, um, my goodness, 15 minutes nearly. That's, that's a whole load of havering, dude. I mean, how, how can I possibly go on this long? We'll catch you all again soon. Bye for now.